Today is Thursday, the 2nd of April, and as of yesterday, here in the United Kingdom, more than 500 people are now dying every day due to the coronavirus, COVID-19. We are in unprecedented times. None of us believed in our lifetimes we would see anything like this. Aeroplanes are grounded, shops are closed, eating out at a, a restaurant is now a thing of the past. We struggle even to communicate with those we love and with family members. We are limited in so many cases to using modern technology to communicate with loved ones. These really are unprecedented and unexpected days that we're living in. Uh, Christmas passed just a few months ago and not one of us for a moment imagined as we entered the new year that by this time in 2020 we would be experiencing the things that we are now experiencing. Churches are closed, we're no longer able to worship together as believers. Many people have had to stop work, meaning they are experiencing huge financial difficulties. Uh, it seems that a recession is inevitable and we are all informed on a daily basis that no one knows how long this is going to continue for. It's very easy for all of us, especially those of us who are alone and have a lot of time to think about what's going on in the world today, to get downhearted and, and dismayed. Uh, as Christians, it's very easy for us to see this as a really negative thing. We're not able to meet in our church buildings. We can't worship together. We have been restricted in so many ways. As a Christian, I know without question that God is in control. Despite all that we have just mentioned, despite all that's going on in the world, God is in control. I also understand and believe that everything that happens, happens by God's permissive will. He allows things to happen and therefore he has allowed this to happen. I also know that everything that God does, he does for a reason and therefore he has allowed this to happen for a reason. And I also believe and, and know from scripture and understand that God does all things for the good of those who love him and for his glory. Herein lies my difficulty. While believing all of those things, I'm still a human being and I still have questions like, why is God allowing this to happen? Why isn't God answering the prayers of untold millions of believers who are praying that this pandemic would come to and end very soon. Uh, why isn't God acting in the way that we are asking him to act? Why is he allowing this to continue? What is it that he wants to teach us through this? Can I make three observations at this time? We're in the midst of the pandemic here in the United Kingdom. And what we are seeing is churches who would ordinarily have congregations of approximately 100 people or less, now reaching 500, 1,000 people or more because they've been forced to live stream their services online. And their congregation now is not made up simply of those who would have attended regularly on a Sunday, but, but now of those who were unable to attend due to old age, ill health or whatever other reason it may be and unbelievers who are tuning in to their live stream. The church now has a new congregation. Secondly, this pandemic is causing every human being to be confronted with the reality of life and death on a daily basis. The reality of the brevity of life. It's causing every human being to ask the question, what happens when I die? What happens after I die? 
It's unavoidable. The busyness of life has been taken away. And now we are being forced to think about the brevity of life and the reality of death. Thirdly, the things which this world presumed to be secure and certain have been revealed as insecure. Nothing in this world is secure. Financial markets have crashed. Unemployment has skyrocketed. People are afraid of losing not only their jobs, but their homes. Everything that seemed to be secure, with perhaps the exception of love and friendships, which of course are maintained, even even they have some level of restriction as we are unable to meet with loved ones and family members in the way we once used to. Things are not at all what they were just a few months ago. But this is a, an incredible opportunity for the gospel. Pastors, make sure that your sermons are containing gospel truth because you have a new congregation. Christian, be sure to be talking about the reality of life and death and what lies beyond life because people are thinking about that now. Make the most of every opportunity to share the gospel with those that you are texting, those that you are calling because right now they're asking questions about these things they're asking the big questions about life and what lies beyond life and as believers we also ought to be of course pointing to the fact that what we have is absolutely secure what's happened has not limited my ability to come to my father to god in prayer in fact i have more time to pray than ever What's happened has not in any way, shape or form limited my ability to learn more about God and mature in my faith through reading the Bible. In fact, I have more time than ever to read the word of God. What's happened and what's going on in the world right now has not in any way, shape or form impeded my freedom to worship God. Now, admittedly, it's not quite the same when I sit at home and sing with my family members or maybe just sing alone, but I'm still able to worship God. And I have the awesome privilege of being able to worship now with believers from all over the world, like I never have before through social media and through the internet. These are unprecedented times, not just in the world, but also for the gospel. And we need to be making the most of every opportunity to speak the gospel into the lives of those around us, family members, friends, work colleagues, through text messages, through phone calls. Now more than ever, people are searching for true meaning in their lives. And God is giving us a wonderful opportunity to share the meaning of life with them. As he says to the world, be still and know that I am God.